Welcome to St. Matthew. We are a neighborhood church. We are a neighborhood church. We are a neighborhood church. Making a world of difference. Making a world of difference. I remember being on the street, walking down the street with all my stuff, and you're walking and you're saying, yeah, Jesus, what's going on with this? And you're walking down and it starts raining. And then you say, holy smokes, what did I do now? And this moment, I'm grateful for getting back on my feet, because I had a good business a few years back, I lost it. Then I was out in the street homeless. And then guys over at the Trinity Center took me in and they brought me over to St. Matthew. So I'm so grateful that those guys picked me off the street, thought that they had enough confidence in me to bring me over there. And they brought me over there and they offered me a shower. They offered me food. They offered me clothes. They don't have sleeping facilities in the summer, but I was so grateful that I could get up every morning out of my bush and take a shower and get something to eat and then get clothes. When I was out there, some people would just offer me a little bit. When you're out there, you want someone to offer you a lot, to take care of all your problems. But when someone offered me that I can just take a shower every day, come here, take a shower every day, I was grateful for that because I got one thing out of the way. Now I'm clean. And then someone else will offer me food. So I'm grateful for someone reaching out and pulling me in. But they're also telling me, you gotta, you gotta do all the work. You gotta be there and you gotta be happy with what we got for you. And later on, maybe someone else will have more for you at another time. That was the start of me getting back on my feet. I am so grateful for all those people. I got my friend Darren who brought me here and uh, he told me that if I get over here, you will love it because he knew the way I am with the religion and stuff. And uh, for the first two years, I didn't miss one, one Sunday here. And I'm really grateful for the family. I love my family. I got a family again. I got people that care for me. I had no clothes that got me clothes. Food, shelter. The shelter I got myself, but they were guiding me. They would say, hey, are you doing the right thing? I got some shelter by doing a barter system with people. They needed someone to take care of the property. I can stay there. And you know, my week started every Sunday morning at nine o'clock is when my week started, when my life started, it was Sunday to Sunday. Everything else didn't really matter. It did, but not as much as being here and having my family and talking to them and telling me that everything's going to be okay. And that, that is something that I really, really cherish. Talk about gratitude. That is gratitude. Oh, oh, oh. 
the precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history It covers me with destiny It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history Paul and Timothy, both of us committed servants of Christ Jesus, write this letter to all the followers of Jesus in Philippi, pastor and ministers including. We greet you with the grace and the peace that comes from God our Father and our Master, Jesus Christ. Every time you cross my mind, I break out an exclamation of thanks to God. Exclamation is a trigger to prayer. I find myself praying for you with a glad heart. I'm so pleased that you have continued on in this with us, believing, proclaiming God's message from the day you heard it right up to the present. There has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that God, who started this great work in you, would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day Christ Jesus appeared. Have you ever received a letter that changed your life? Maybe an acceptance letter to college or grad school. Maybe a letter to let you know that your adoption had been approved or that your foster care had been moved through the system. Maybe your letter wasn't a happy one. Maybe it was a letter of divorce or a termination letter. Letters have so much power because words have power. Over the course of this month, we're going to be looking at a beautiful letter that was written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Philippi. Now, I'm not sure if you know Paul's story or not, but one thing you must know about Paul to understand all the letters he wrote which, by the way, make up well over two-thirds of the New Testament, you must understand that Paul was radically transformed by God's grace. And due to being interrupted by grace, Paul's radical transformation leads us to find that grace is a central theme to many of his letters. In verse 2 of chapter 1, Paul greeted those early believers with this word. Grace to you. Peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul opened most of his letters with these words, and altogether he mentions God's grace close to a hundred times in his letters. 
Now, the Apostle Paul never got over the amazing grace of God, the grace that met him on the road to Damascus and awakened him to the love of Jesus. In chapter 3, Paul will tell us that if anybody could have been saved by keeping the Old Testament law, it would have been him. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. But all of that, he says, was garbage compared to the grace Paul found in the person of Jesus Christ. It also helps to remember that before he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul did everything he could to terrorize early Christians. He was a radical fanatic against Jesus. Here's part of his testimony. In Acts 22, Paul said, I am indeed a Jew born in Tarsus of Sicilia, brought up in a city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictness of our father's law, and was zealous towards God as you all are today. I persecuted this way to death, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. Paul also said that this I did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue, compelling them to blaspheme and being exceedingly enraged against them. I persecuted them even to the foreign cities. Paul hated Christians. No wonder in 1 Timothy 1.15, Paul says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. See, Paul never got over the grace of God. Central to this book and central to this season that we're moving into, this Thanksgiving moment, is the idea of gratitude. Now, Paul's gratitude in the greeting of this letter is palpable. In verse 3 through 5, Paul overflowed with thanksgiving as he told the church, every time you cross my mind, I break out in exclamations of thanks to God. Each exclamation is a trigger to prayer. I find myself praying for you with a glad heart, and I'm so pleased that you've continued on in this with us, believing and proclaiming God's message from the day you heard it right to the present. There has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you would keep at it and bring it to flourishing finish on the very day that Christ appears. The church, just like for Paul, has been central to my life. It truly has been the greatest gift to me. And one of the things I love most about the church is what Paul is so thankful for in this letter. It's all about relationships. That's the core purpose of the church. The first relationships that Paul highlights was the loving relationship we have with God. In verse three, Paul says, I thank my God. Then he turns that focus from God into his focus of relationship with the people of Philippi. And Paul said, I thank my God every time I remember you. So this got me thinking. Does the world have reasons to thank God for the church? Does our neighborhood have reasons to thank God for St. Matthew? Do those that interact with us individually leave with gratitude because we made their day better? Paul was grateful because as he said in this section, this community gave him joy. He was grateful because of the koinonia they offered him. This is where we get our word for fellowship or partnership. It's the idea of sharing or doing things together in love and in mutual concern. See, this group gathered together in the name of Jesus and they cared for Paul in the hardest of times and they weren't afraid to enter into Paul's chaos. Remember, he's writing this from prison. So while he was in prison and in chains, this community continued to physically share their concern. Paul could have said, I don't come to church because I ought to. 
I don't watch church on TV because I have to. I come because I want to. The Lord has put that desire in my heart and I wanna be with some of the best people in the world. We need more of Paul's grateful attitude. That's why we named this series what we did. In the midst of imprisonment, Paul is still thankful. In the midst of the pandemic, we too can still be grateful. And we need to live so other people can honestly say, I thank God every time I remember you. So as Paul continues this opening greeting, he moves from grace to gratitude to prayer for growth for the people of Philippi. Paul prayed for those in Philippi to continue to grow in this way of love, this Jesus way. And in verse 9 to 11, he says, this is my prayer that your love will flourish and that you will not only love much, but you'll love well. That you'll learn to love appropriately that you need to use your head and test your feelings so that your love is sincere and intelligent and not sentimental gush. Live a lover's life, circumspect and exemplary, a life that Jesus will be proud of, bountiful in fruits from the soul, making Jesus Christ attractive to all, getting everyone involved in the glory and praise of God. Paul prayed for these good and godly Christians to keep growing in love in wisdom, and in goodness. And what a high standard Paul gives in verse 10 when he says that you may be sincere without offense until the day of Christ. Grace, gratitude, growth. These are the center point to the greeting in Philippi, the call to Paul to this church that they might truly meet God and then live that presence to the world around them in such a way that people couldn't help but give thanks. Amen. I love words. And the word for Eucharist in the Bible is a word that can change everything. Eucharisteo, it comes right out of the Gospel of Luke, where it says, and he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them. In the original language, he gave thanks, reads Eucharisteo. The root word Eucharisteo is charis, meaning grace. Jesus took the bread and saw it as grace, and he gave thanks. He took the bread and knew it to be a gift and gave thanks. Eucharisteo, thanksgiving, envelops the Greek word for grace, but it also holds the derivative, the Greek word kara, meaning joy. Charis, grace, Eucharisteo, thanksgiving, and kara, joy. Deep joy is found only at the table of the Eucharisteo, the table of thanksgiving. And the holy grail of joy, God set it in the very center of Christianity. The Eucharist is the central symbol of all the Christianity. One of Christ's very last directives he offers to his disciples is to take the bread and the wine and to remember. Do this and remember me. Remember and give thanks. This is the crux of Christianity, to remember and to give thanks. Why? Why is remembering and giving thanks the core of a Christian faith? Because remembering with thanks is what causes us to trust, to really believe. Remembering, becoming one again, giving thanks in what makes us members of the body of Christ to member ourselves again. Giving thanks is what puts us back together again in this hurried, broken, and fragmented world. So we invite you to this table. All are welcome, and it is the most inclusive table in the world, and there is nothing that can separate you from God's love. Join us at the table. 
And in the night in which Christ's love was revealed to its fullest, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body given for you. Take, eat, and remember me. In the same way, he took the cup, blessed it and said, this is the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, and remember me. Share your bread and cup at home, saying the bread of life and the cup of grace. God, we thank you for your call to grace, gratitude, and growth. May we be challenged to go deeper, to be more thankful, and to know the power of your grace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from my fears. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from my fears. I'm not scared. scared here I'm not scared here I'm not scared Today we heard Pastor Rustin talk about a letter that Paul wrote to a church. Did you know that Paul wrote this letter to his friends from jail? Can you even imagine that? The church was a special community for Paul. This group of people had cared for Paul when things got really difficult. They sent him help and gifts even when Paul was in prison. Have you ever received a letter that meant a lot to you? Maybe it was a birthday card or a note from a friend, grandparent or a teacher. This is my letterbox. It's full of treasure. Inside I keep notes, drawings, letters, and cards from people I love. Our words can be so meaningful. So, reading this letter from Paul to the church in Philippi got me thinking, how can we as a church extend our Thanksgiving to people in our neighborhood? Then I remembered that starting this week, we move into nine months of this pandemic. Nine months of sheltering in place and nine months of essential workers helping to keep all of us safe. We have many leaders like doctors and nurses, leaders like firefighters and ambulance drivers, leaders like our teachers, and leaders like our grocery workers, delivery drivers, and restaurant staff. Each of these people has done for us a similar service that the community in Philippi did for Paul. They continue to care for us and to offer us help even when things around us have gotten really difficult. This is really brave and really special. So here's your challenge for this week. And pay attention, grown-ups. This is a great opportunity for kids and adults alike. Here it is. Let's all write three letters to people in our community and tell them we are grateful for the service they have given us. This could be a family project might choose to write a thank you note to one essential worker in your community each night before or after dinner. Whoever God puts on your heart, follow that prompting. Then give them that letter as a thank you. I promise they will appreciate it. Remember, gratitude starts with our attitudes.
We are so glad that you were able to worship with us. If you enjoyed this service, take a second to press the thumbs up and make sure to hit the YouTube subscribe button to get notified of any future videos. St. Matthew is a neighborhood church making a world of difference. And the only way we are able to do that is through your generous giving. We have three easy ways where you can set up your own giving plan, either by visiting our website at www.stmatthew.org give, or you can set up a reoccurring bill pay through your financial provider. Lastly, you can give with your cell phone right now by texting GIVE to 925-854-4402 and following the prompts. St. Matthew is continuing to hold a food drive to support the Monument Crisis Center. Please check out our social media and online news for current needs. Drop your food donations off at the church in the bin or boxes labeled Monument Crisis Center, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. There are two ways you can stay up to date with everything going on at St. Matthew, either by checking out the Happening Now section of our website each week or by signing up to have the e-news delivered to your inbox. You can even sign up right now for our e-news by texting Saint Matt to 22828. To learn more about St. Matthew and our mission, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Links to our social media are also in the description of this video. Again, thank you for joining us online this Sunday. Now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Father, who are in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. For yours is the glory, the kingdom, and the majesty, what was the third thing? What is the third thing? The kingdom and the... <laughs> For yours is the kingdom, the glory, and the majesty. <laughs> the majesty? Majesty's not... There's no majesty. That is...